Welcome. We're back here with Spiritual Reality. Of course, I am Mr. Kirkendall. I am your reality and spiritual counselor. Today, we're going to discuss how to make better choices. The hallmark of us being able to improve our lives and make better decisions and get better outcomes is our, it starts with our choices. It starts with our decisions. It starts with our thought process. So before we can make better choices, we first have to be able to improve our thinking. And in order to prove, improve your thinking, you first have to know why you think the way you do in the first place. That is generally um, where a lot of us are going to get stuck. Our thought process will come from a lot of different places in our lives. It will come from, you know, your upbringing, your value set. It may also come from your environment, or it will come from your environment. Right? And also your circumstances. Right? What do I mean by circumstances? Um, for example, a tall person will have a different thought process than a short person. Someone who's overweight is going to have a different thought process than someone who's skinny. If you're rich, you're probably going to think different than somebody who's poor. Okay? That comes into play as well as the environment you come from, right? Or the, um, the value set you were raised with. These are all the things that's going to contribute to your thought process. So, for example, uh, someone who's raised in the South, uh, their environment probably is going to include, especially the rural South, it's probably going to include a lot of hunting, a lot of fishing, right? A lot of outdoor activities, you know, it's a little bit greener environment. So you're going to think a little bit differently about things, especially when it comes to hot button issues like guns, right? If you live in a big city, guns mean something completely different than they mean if you live in a rural area. So, so your environment a lot of times is going to shape the way that you think. Somebody from a high crime area, some people are going to view having a gun as a really bad idea. Others are going to view it as a necessity for protection. So that, that's the environment shaping your, um, your thought process, your values. If you're raised a certain way, right, right or wrong, it do doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. If you're raised a certain way, that's going to be part of your value set. That's going to contribute to your thought process. For example, someone who's raised in a house where nobody finishes high school, right, and, uh, you know, everybody works minimum wage jobs, everybody gets um, some kind of government assistance, that's going to be part of your value system. Right? It's not right or wrong, it's just is. It's, that's going to be part of who you are, part of your value system. Somebody who's raised in a household where everybody goes to college, everybody gets a degree, everybody gets an education, everybody has a sort of, you know, upper, lower middle class lifestyle, that's going to be part of the value set. So, if you're raised in a household where people go to church, you know, generally people who go to church as adults generally went to church as children. So that's going to be all part of your value system. So what's going to contribute to our thoughts, at least the main things that will contribute to our thoughts, are going to be our circumstances, our values, and our environment. Now, other, there are other things that will also contribute to your, to your thoughts. One of the major things that will contribute to your thoughts is trauma. Right? Somebody who has gone through trauma in their life, that's going to contribute to your thought process too for a very long time, particularly if you end up with some form of PTSD because of that trauma. What we mean by PTSD, post-traumatic stress. And that is a lot more common than what people think. Right? A lot of people, when we think about post-traumatic stress, we think about a soldier, somebody who's been to war. But it's a lot more common. I mean, you have two types of those types of uh, traumas. You have the acute uh, traumatic stress, which is when you are 
experiencing some anxiety or some trauma based on something that recently happened, like within the last 30 days, post-traumatic stress means something happened a long time ago and you're still having problems dealing with it. Now, the reason why, why the reason Ed has a problem with your thought process, okay, is because somebody who's going through a traumatic experience is going to make decisions a lot of times based on that traumatic experience. Okay, if you were raped, if you were robbed, you know, if, if you were bullied, you know, molested, you know, there, there's a lot of people, particularly bullying. Bullying is a huge problem in society, and it's and it's extremely traumatic. And you have a lot of people who are now adults, right, who have PTSD from being bullied, and they're making decisions based on that in their lives. You have a lot of cops, judges, teachers. You know, politicians, there's a lot of people in a lot of different professions that make laws and rules and, 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 and decisions based on the fact that they were traumatized as a kid and been bullied, right? That's not, that's, that's not healthy, and it's not helpful to society as a whole. But a lot of times we, a lot of times we, uh, we don't even recognize when somebody's suffering from post-traumatic stress, right? That's one of the biggest causes of people having what I call a irrational thought process. And that's what we kind of, that's what we're going to kind of talk about. Your thought process being irrational. Okay? When your thought process is irrational, right? You're going to make irrational choices, meaning you're going to and then you're going to do irrational things. And so we we ask, well, how do our thought process become irrational? Well, Generally, it comes from normalizing a dysfunctional situation. In other words, if you've been in a dysfunctional environment, a dysfunctional circumstance, or you have dysfunctional values, and you have normalized that, which we do, because human beings are designed to adapt. So, once we normalize a dysfunctional situation, what tends to happen is, Right, normal things then start looking dysfunctional to you. Okay, say for example, if you grew up in a house where there was always domestic violence, right? Somebody was always being beaten in that house. Well, after a while, it becomes a normal situation, right? If you're beaten as a child, you obviously think, well, this is well, my parents did it. This is the way we raise kids. This is what we're supposed to do. If you come from a household where the mother's routinely beaten, right? There's a good chance you're gonna say, well, this is this is how things are, right? This is the way things are supposed to be. You you you've been in that dysfunctional situation for so long, it becomes normal. And it shapes your thinking. So, how do we know when our thoughts are leading to bad things that need to be changed? Well, you look at the outcomes that you're getting in your life. The outcomes that we get in our lives are directly related to the way we think and the things that we do and of course the choices that we make. And the way we think, the things that we do and the choices that we make are directly linked to our value system, our environment, and our circumstances. So now we've, now we've put ourselves in a situation where we keep getting these bad outcomes that we don't want. Maybe you keep going back and forth to jail. Perhaps you can't get out of debt. Maybe you keep ending up in really bad relationships. I, I, I'm not sure what the particular circumstance is. It's going to be different for everybody. But every time you get into one of these circumstances, it starts with the way you think, the choices you make, and the things you do after that. Okay? So, you want to start addressing the thoughts that you have. Because you're not going to be able to change um, change the value system you was raised with. Now, you can adopt a different value system. And you may be able to change some of your circumstances. Right? And you can For some people. Sometimes, sometimes you can change your environment. Sometimes you can't. So, the main thing what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to look at your thought process 
and make a decision on whether or not it's irrational. Right? Irrational thinking can mean, can mean a lot. For example, if you think that, well, I'm gonna, let's, let's say you're a young lady and you think that, well, if this guy is not beating on me, then he doesn't love me. And if, if you believe that, if you honestly believe that if a person who doesn't beat on you doesn't love you, then that's, that's an irrational thought. Right? Or you think, well, nobody cares about me. Again, that's we're talking about seven billion people in the world, and there's nobody in that world that actually cares about it, or everybody in that world dislikes you. Again, that's extreme and that is irrational. Or I'm never gonna be able to do this, or I'm never gonna amount to anything, or I'm never gonna do this. Anytime you start having these extreme thoughts, where you use terms like nobody and never and stuff like that, those are extreme. That means you that means your thought processes are irrational. And, but that's not. But it's not limited to that. There's going to be a lot of times where you're going to have an irrational thought process. So, what you want to be able to do is this. You want to be able to think first. So we're going to reverse engineer. It, okay, let's reverse engineer it. First, imagine. Imagine the outcome that you want. Okay. Listen, imagine the outcome that you want. Right? And that could that could be any outcome. It, it could be a number of things that you might want. You could want better health. You could want better finances. Right? You could want uh, better relationships. There's a ton of things that, that we probably want in our lives and are not getting. Right? Most of the time, we're not getting it because of the way we think and the things that we do. And then we mistakenly believe that it's some outside force that's stopping us from, from obtaining those things. And in reality, it's usually us. For example, uh, one of the big things we hear about now, especially in politics, is wealth inequality. Right? And you, you, you know, you got a lot of politicians that are running around saying, "Oh, it's because of the rich people that you know that you're not that you're not succeeding, or that you're not getting this, or you're not getting that." It's because of the wealthy, right? And they need to pay their fair share. Well, again, let's reverse engineer that. What does somebody else have, or what they've done? What does that have anything to do with what you have or what you're doing? doesn't it has nothing to do with it right so so the first thing first thing is first you have to own responsibility for the things you want and you have to own responsibility for the thoughts you have and the things that you do and the choices that you make right when you put that responsibility on someone else it then you have to sit back and wait for that person to do something in order for your life to improve Right? So if we're blaming the government or if you're blaming the rich people because you're poor, then <laughs> you have to wait on those rich people or you have to wait on the government to do something in order for you to improve your life. Nobody wants that. That essentially makes you a slave. And nobody wants to be a slave. So the first thing you have to do is imagine what it is that you want. Second thing you do, after you imagine what it is that you want, Okay. Then you look at your thoughts and your behavior and your choices and you ask yourself, how is my current thinking and behavior helping me get to this point that I want to get to? And then you and then if it's not helping you, right? Obviously now you have to take a different way of thinking and a different way of doing things. Okay, so you look at your behavior and you look at the outcomes you're currently getting you and you ask yourself, okay, how am I getting here? Right, again, we're going to reverse engineer. How am I getting here? I'm here right now, but I want to get here. So how can I get from here to this next place that I want to be? Okay, so that means you have to start with, it's kind of, sort of like your GPS system, right? 
if you if you get in your car, right, and you GPS to a certain destination, the car is gonna get the GPS system is gonna give you the, the uh, directions to that destination. Okay, but if you um, get in your car and you now you know of a different destination then the GPS is going to give you the proper destination. It's going to give you, you know, so you're going to be able to take the right path. And that starts with the way, it starts with the way you're thinking. So you have to begin to think about a path that, that, that you want to take, something that is going to be appropriate and something that's going to be acceptable to the outcome that you want to get. That's going to be different for everybody. So, if you want to, I don't know, maybe you want to become a doctor. Well, if you're taking the thought process that's going to land you someplace completely different, and you make a decision that's going to land you someplace different than that, then you have to change the way you're thinking in order to get that. And that's not, that's not necessarily easy, especially if you've been thinking a certain way for a very, very, very long time. If someone, for example, has been thinking or doing things for 30 years, they've been doing things one way, they keep getting the same results, right? And they're, they're unhappy with those results. And then somebody like me comes along and says, hey, you know what? You probably should change the way you're thinking or change what you're doing, and you may get some better results out of that. Well, it's going to be difficult for them because they've been doing this the same way for the last 30 years. But think about it, right? And and most things that happen, most things in life happens. And this is this, and this is one of the problems we run into. Most things in life will happen when we start making choices and decisions. Most things will happen in baby steps, right? Happens all the time with negative things, right? This this is where we this is where we really get off the off target. It happens all the time with negative things. For example, when somebody ends up with type two diabetes, heart disease. Or uh, you know, kidney failure, colon cancer. There's a whole bunch of ailments, a whole bunch of negative things that take place in our lives that we did or accomplished step by step, a little bit at a time. Didn't happen overnight, right? Step by step. But what happens is we're doing it because we enjoy the process, right? You don't get lung cancer after one cigarette. You get lung cancer after 30 years of smoking. Right? Doesn't mean it was okay to smoke for 30 years because you didn't get lung cancer in year 31, but you smoked because you enjoyed it. That's what your thought process was. You behaved, you acted on it, you made the choices, and then the outcome was lung cancer. Now, here's the thing. While we're eating all this sugar that's leading to diabetes, or we're eating all this different types of bad food that's leading to heart disease, or we're um, doing things that's leading to um, colon cancer or lung cancer or whatever, we're not sitting back saying, man, I can't wait until I get this type 2 diabetes. Or I can't wait till I get this lung cancer. I'm tired of smoking these cigarettes every day. I wish the lung cancer would hurry up. No, we don't do that. Right? We keep smoking. And then finally, you know, the lung, eventually the lung cancer ultimately comes. Well, you have to adopt some of the same principles when it comes to improving yourself. Right? Sometimes when we when we start down the path of improving ourselves, what we do is we, we focus on the outcome. Now, you should have an outcome in mind so you'll know where you're going. You'll know where your destination is. But a lot of times we when we start trying to improve ourselves, okay, we are focusing almost 100%, 100%, on our um, on our outcome, and so the process never gets never really gets done. So one of the things we want to be able to do is begin to focus on our process. Number one, we have to change. We have to really evaluate our thoughts, right? So 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 that we're now thinking so that our goal and our thoughts are matching up. Then we have to start looking at our process, right? Because the process that we take is important, right? The process that we that we that we're looking at, right? 
we have to be able to do these things okay, in perpetuity. In other words, when, when we're working on a process, it has to be something that we can do forever. Forever. Or well, at least for the rest of your life. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It, they take weight loss, for example. One of the reasons why weight loss is so difficult is because normally we pick a process that's torturous. Right? We, we, you go on these really bad diets. I don't care what it is. Keto diet, low carb diet, low fat diet, low this diet, get rid of this diet, do this. None of it works because it's not sustainable. Torture is not sustainable. So anytime you start the process of improving yourself, if, you, if, if it's torturous, you're not going to maintain it. So you have to, A, find a process that you, can, that you can stick with. Okay, so first step is you develop an outcome, right? An outcome that's favorable to you. Then you start adjusting your thinking so that it's in tune with that outcome. Now comes the, the choices and the actions. And those choices and the actions, that's the long part. That's the hard part. That means it has to be something that you can maintain. Because if you, because if you, if you get to that point where, let's say, you, you, find, you do re re reach a certain outcome, and all of a sudden you stop the process that got you to the outcome, guess what? You're going to end up back in a, in a place that you don't want to be. Okay, remember, look, look, look at it like traveling. Okay, if you if you if you want to go to I don't know say Chicago to New York, and uh, one person says, okay, I'm gonna I need you to go from Chicago to New York, and they give you a plane ticket. You may arrive in you may arrive in New York or California, where do they want, ever want you to go? You you will arrive there very quickly, but there's gonna be something missing. Now, if I give you a rucksack and tell you, okay, I want you to go from Chicago to California, but you have to walk. Now, from Chicago to California, you're going to know everything in between. Right? That means you're going to learn, have learned a whole bunch of things throughout that process of going from Chicago to California. Right, you're going to know about the, all the lakes and rivers and mountains and restaurants over here. You're going to, I mean, you, you're just going to know all these different things because you took the journey. And then you begin to understand the experience of life and the knowledge comes in the journey. Not so much the destination. Okay? But you want to be traveling in the direction of your desired destination. And this is how we begin to change our thought process. You have to be willing to challenge conventional wisdom, at least the conventional wisdom in your life. A lot of us are raised with things that don't really work. I mean, that's the, that's the way our family did it, or that's the way things have worked in our community. But it, it may not be getting you to the, to the destination or outcome you desire. And you have to be willing to challenge that. I mean, you have to be willing to go back, yeah, my mother told me this, but man, it really hasn't worked out. Oh well, man, yeah, that's how we did it in my hood, but man, look at where it's gotten me, right? So you, you have to be willing to challenge your own personal conventional wisdom. Then you have to be willing to challenge things that when you're making decisions based on your circumstances. Even then, is this the best decision for me? Right? Is this going to get me to where I want to go? You have to be willing to challenge those things. If, you, if you're not willing to challenge your own conventional wisdom that a lot of us have in our lives, a lot of us have, you're not going to get very far. Okay? You have to be willing to do that. Now, once we, once, once we begin to establish these, these things, A, we need to know where we're going, right? We need to set up a certain destination or outcome that we want. Then we have to kind of key into our own personal GPS, right? That helps us change our thought process. 
okay? Then we got to start looking at the choices because your thinking is what leads to your choices and your actions. And all the while, while you're doing this, you also begin to change your value system. Because that's what it's all rooted in. It's rooted in your value system, your environment, and your, and your circumstances. So now that you start changing all these things, you'll begin to see different results and different outcomes. Now, it doesn't have to be dramatic or overnight. Now, some things have to be dramatic. Uh, I often like to say, you know, if, you, if you're going, let's say, east in Chicago, ultimately, if you keep going, you're going to end up in the lake. So if you don't want to end up in a lake, obviously you have to change the direction that you're going. So some things are going to be are not going to need to be dramatic, but most will not. Most things will require simple, small changes. But you have to be patient with it and be consistent in those changes. First, uh, this is my uh, book available on Amazon called Soul Sessions. It's spiritual reality counseling for becoming your best self. What we do as spiritual reality is all about people becoming their best self. Being able to change your thoughts, your behavior, your thinking, and your actions, and your value system, your circumstances, environment, to get a better outcome is all part of of becoming your best self. I am Mr. Kirkendall. I am signing off. Thank you for listening.